In the past few years, I have done a year in review to talk to you about my business growth, my accomplishments throughout the year, things that I wished I had done differently, and my goals for the next year. But this year, I wanted to do things a little bit differently. When I first started, I remember the biggest question I had was all around finances in the business in terms of how much was this going to cost? What do I spend money on? What do I not spend money on? So this year, I thought I would do something different and talk through my different expenses throughout the year and really how much it costs to run an online business. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca from Rebecca Grace Designs, and I help Squarespace designers use code on their clients' websites. Overall, a rule of thumb in my business is that I like to keep expenses to 30% of my total sales. So for example, if you are projected to do $100,000 in sales this year, then I wouldn't want to spend more than $30,000 on expenses. Here is a look at my breakdown of all of my expenses. Feel free to pause the video or go to my blog where I have this picture posted. And I've broken down the expenses into a few categories. The first is accounts and memberships. Um, just over 28% of my expenses were towards this. So I'll break that down even further after the rest of the category. So we'll come back to that one. Um, I then have advertising and that's anything to do with my Facebook ads, brand photos, anything to do with advertising and marketing. Um, and that was 17, just over 17% of my expenses. I then have business licenses and contracts. Um, it's very important that you do your client contracts. I like to use the Creative Law Shop for all of my contracts. Um, and my business license, obviously, all to do with the uh, Canadian government. So that would be dependent on your area. Um, and that was just under 2% of my business expenses, so it's not a huge expense for me. Next category is equipment. Um, this one was a little bit higher this year than it is in other years because I really started to examine my work from home uh, situation and found that I was really starting to kind of become a hobbit <laughs> in my office. I was missing that sort of social connection. And also um, I wanted to make sure that I was still being active um, even while working from home. So I decided to kind of uh, up my equipment and my setup in my office. I purchased a laptop. Um, most of my work is done from my desktop. So I purchased a, a new laptop so that I can be mobile, work from cafes. I'm um, just get out of the house a little bit, move around the house even. I purchased a new webcam and microphone. And then I also purchased a standing desk and a walking treadmill, um, just again, to make sure that I'm still being active and getting my steps in. Next is outsourcing. Just under 10% of my expenses was with outsourcing this year. Um, I decided to hand over uh, a lot of my social media. Um, I decided to take a step back in my Instagram account and really push towards YouTube and Pinterest this year. And so I started outsourcing um, my Pinterest and as well as my SEO um, just to help kind of manage my time a little bit better. The next is processing fees. This is an expense that a lot of people don't think about. Um, when they're starting an online business. It's something I definitely didn't know about and it's actually quite a big chunk of your expenses. Um, this is just over 10% of my expenses is processing fees. And so this has to do with people using credit cards and things for their online shop. Um, HoneyBook has expenses um, or processing fees for that as well. Stripe, um, PayPal, all of them have processing fees. And so that takes up about 10% of my expenses. Um, professional development varies year to year. Um, this year it was 11% of my expenses. I always am trying to improve myself and my business and keep learning. And so professional development tends to be um, a focus for me and something that I enjoy doing. And lastly, I had resources, which only took up just over 1% of my expenses. This is things like purchasing fonts, um, mock-up templates, uh, different plugins, things like that, um, just depending on um, what I'm doing in my business. Um, if it's a purchase for a client, then that comes in, then they pay for that. Uh, so this would be resources uh, for myself and my business. So let's break down my accounts and memberships. Um, this takes up almost 30% of my expenses. And so I want to go through what accounts and subscriptions I'm still using, which ones I'm no longer using, which ones I recommend. 
Um, so still using uh, is Squarespace. Obviously, I'm still using Squarespace. My business is hosted on Squarespace and all about Squarespace, so that one's kind of a given. I also have a Canva Pro account, which I use pretty much every day, so I highly recommend that. Um, I also use Creative Market. Um, for fonts and graphics and things like that for my site templates mock-ups things like that um, so I purchase a um, through creative market a lot uh, creative law shop is where I get all of my contracts and templates so that's not really a subscription um, but it is where I go to for all of my contracts um, honeybook is the program that I use for all of my um, client management so that's how I send all of my contracts and invoices and how I get that paid I have a whole bunch of videos on how I use HoneyBook um, so I definitely still use that very heavily in my business and you can go check those out as well um, Elf site is another program I use for plugins so if I have timers on my site um, I did use their search bar for a little while they have a ton of different widgets um, and I tend to use them for anything that is uh, either going to be temporary on my site or that I don't really want to write code for. So I use code for mainly styling. Um, when it comes to um, other bits, I tend to use Elf site for that. I have a Vimeo uh, Pro account um, and this is for my client uh, videos. So whenever I'm recording videos for clients or my coaching clients, um, then I will upload them to Vimeo and hand that off so that they can stay private. I also then have a Zoom account associated with this so that I can uh, meet with clients and have more than one client and no sort of um, limit on how long we can meet. Um, I use PayPal, so it's not an expense, uh, but it does have processing fees and things like that. So I do use PayPal for some things. I do try to limit PayPal with payments. I try to only go through Stripe for most of my payments, um, but the odd time I do use PayPal. Um, member space is an account that I use for um, my uh, membership, my encyclopedia membership. I know Squarespace has a membership account, but it wasn't able to do all of the things that I needed it to do when I first started out. And now that it's on member space, I haven't really found a reason to move it over to Squarespace's membership um, at this time. So I have a member space account for that. Um, and all of my plugin courses were hosted on Teachable. Um, I still am using it, but I am moving things over to a new platform. I love Teachable and it was really great. What kind of my hang up was is that I wasn't able to add my tax ID. Um, they do allow you to add a tax ID, but it wasn't really working with Canada very well. Um, I think it is something they're working on and they have added in, but um, I decided to move it over to a new program, which I'll explain in a second as well. So nothing against Teachable. I like Teachable as a course platform, um, and I do feel like I am going to miss it and might come back to it in the future, um, but I've decided to move to a new platform. Um, that new platform is Kartra. So I am now using Kartra for my plugins and I'm moving things over to that. Um, the reason I decided to do that is because it was allowed me to get rid of quite a few of the accounts and memberships that I was using and combine them all onto one. So Kartra allowed me to get rid of Easy Webinar um, for my webinars that I was hosting, Deadline Funnel. Um, for the timers on my sales pages and active campaign, which I was using for my email marketing. Kartra was able to combine all of that and Teachable as well into one system. Um, now, I there's pros and cons with that. <laughs> um, I do really like Kartra and I'm enjoying Kartra. The main benefit being that now everything's in one space. So my um, sales pages, if I have, um, I do have some sales pages on Kartra and some on Squarespace, depending on what I want them to do. Um, Kartra has a lot of analytics and tracking um, built into the pages. So all of my leads um, and email systems and stuff are in Kartra and I can connect sales pages to that very seamlessly. So I tend to use Kartra for some of my um, sales pages. Um, and so um, it also, and so I like that everything is in one place. Um, my plugins are, are all there, my email marketing, my sales, like everything's in one place. And I really like that. Um, the kind of downside to that is if there's a program that has a little bit of everything, 
they're not necessarily um, providing advanced features for that one thing. So if you are looking for just an email marketing system, I used Active Campaign and I really liked Active Campaign. Um, but because I was paying for that and a bunch of other things, I decided to kind of put it all together. So Kartra does a really good job with email campaigns, but I wouldn't say it's as good as Active Campaign. Um, and I wouldn't say their timer is as, as good and advanced as Deadline Funnel. Um, and their courses aren't as necessarily as easy to set up as Teachable um, because Teachable is a course platform. So if you have, if you're looking for one thing and that's the thing you're doing, it's, I generally find it's best to go to a program that that is their one thing in their specialty. Um, but because I needed a little bit of all of these things, um, I think you know, found it more beneficial that they're all in one place. And I was able to get all the features that I needed um, with Kartra. And so I do really enjoy Kartra. I think it's it's good and everything, um, but maybe not as uh, good in one particular thing as let's say Active Campaign is with emails and Teachable is with courses. Um, and so it's sort of a trade-off. Um, it didn't, it wasn't necessarily as fancy as those tools, but I didn't really need um, everything that those tools had. And so Kartra allowed me to have it all in one place and all the features that I needed in order to run my business. So I was able to get rid of easy webinar, deadline funnel, active campaign, and soon teachable and replace it with Kartra. Um, I'm also um, new this year is I uh, started QuickBooks and um, Sush Sushio, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right properly, um, but those are allowing me to integrate uh, Stripe with QuickBooks and have that accounting software. So that's something I'm moving towards. And I also added in CodePen, um, which houses uh, my code and things like that for some of my plugins. Um, the other program that I'm no longer using this year is Later. So I started using it. Um, Later provides um, posting to a bunch of different social platforms. So because I'm taking a step back from Instagram, um, I decided I didn't really necessarily need later to schedule out all those posts for me. And so I have dropped that program. So to summarize, how much does it cost? What are my expenses in running an online business? Again, I like to keep my expenses to 30% of my income. You know, this is really difficult when you're first starting out because you're not sure how much you're going to be making. So you're like, what is 30%? Um, as a Squarespace website designer, there are only kind of a few things you need to start out with. And then you can build that up as you get more confident in what you're going to be bringing in. Um, so as an absolute must, you obviously need you know a Squarespace account or a website um, yourself so you have your expenses in terms of keeping uh, your own domain domain name and um, a website and things like that um, and then you're going to want some sort of email marketing system in order to be starting to collect um, and build an email list um, there are free options out there. I started out on MailerLite, which is free. But I would suggest having uh, something going, whether that's active campaigns, Squarespace campaigns, or some sort of email marketing system. You're gonna want something to start building up an audience. You also may consider having a system that allows you to send and receive contracts and payments with your clients. I suggest HoneyBook for this. Um, and I do have a code for you if you click the link below. Um, this video on my blog, I do have uh, a code where you can get 50% off your first year. Um, so I suggest checking that out so that you can send and receive contracts. Um, speaking of, you'll also need contracts, privacy policy, and terms and conditions. You want to make sure that your business is legal right off the bat. And so that is kind of what I suggest you start with. So contracts, a way to collect and receive contracts and payments, an email system, and your Squarespace account. Um, most other things you can find free versions of to start off with, and then you can build up to the pro versions once you feel that that is necessary. And so that is my financial year in review. I hope this has really helped you um, sort out what is necessary and how much it costs to run an online business.